Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, and today I want to talk about dynamic contrast. Now, a lot of times we jump into plugins and programs in order to get this type of look, but you don't have to. You can do it right here in Photoshop and have all of Photoshop's tools available to you on that big contrast boost. So what does it look like? Well, here is our before, here is our after. I'm going to zoom into these rocks so that you can see just how powerful this can be to bring out detail in those rocks. Okay, so let's jump in. Got a lot of cool stuff to show you. In today's tutorial, I want to talk about that dynamic contrast look. And this comes from a conversation I was having with a buddy. My buddy Leon and I, we were out uh, eating dinner before we were about to go shooting at a sunflower field. And he's like, you know, I jump into these programs and these plugins because sometimes I just want that really dynamic, uh, effective contrast look that I just can't seem to get in Photoshop. And then he's like, you know, do you think there's a way you can do that in Photoshop? I said, I'm pretty sure there is. So that's where this comes from. I came back and I was like, the whole night we were th I was thinking about how on earth can we get that dynamic contrast or that effective contrast, as I'm calling it here, look in your images that you would find in On One Effects or Topaz Clarity. And that's where this comes from. So before we begin, uh, I would have to look at the photograph and I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, this will not work on every single image, okay? It's only going to work on specific images that need that dynamic contrast boost in something like the rocks, let's say, in this image here. So if I zoom in, you can see these, these rocks look like they're pretty detailed, but they're actually rather soft compared to how we could make them look. Also, before we begin, I've made a series of actions for these, so you're free to download them on F64 Academy. They are yours to play with. I don't expect you to remember everything in this tutorial because uh, while it is very simple, uh, there's quite a few steps in order to make it effective. So this comes from the idea of using the blend mode of soft light. And what soft light does is it, if you apply a 50% gray layer to your image, it is not going to become 50% gray when you change it to soft light because anything neutral gray will not affect your image anything white or black will affect your image like you see in this very fancy drawing here that we have as our demonstration for soft light if i change this blend mode to soft light you'll notice that the darks get darker and the lights get lighter but never really get pure black and never really get pure white in any one of those spots if we change this back to normal you can see exactly where those spots are turn that back to soft light turn the preview off notice how things are getting darker notice how things are getting lighter then we got that strip there as our accountability strip so you know exactly what's going on there and that's where this idea comes from because what you're going to be seeing is a lot of 50 percent gray or what appear to be 50 percent gray layers with a minimal amount of detail so the first thing we do is press commander control j to duplicate our background layer and go to filter and go to other and go to high pass now a high pass filter it looks like a gray image, a 50% gray image. And here you see little bits of color. And we are going to see little bits of color in a second here. Typically, you're probably more comfortable using a high pass at something like four or three. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to 25 pixels. Now, this will also be dictated on the image size that you're using. The photo that I'm working on here is a very large 42 megapixel image. So a radius of 25 pixels isn't very strong here, as opposed to maybe a 20 megapixel image, 25 pixels would be way too much. So keep that in mind while you're doing your editing process. So we're going to go ahead and press OK. And what you're going to see here is a uh, has slight amounts of color in this. So what we need to do is press Control Shift U or Command Shift U on a Mac, and that will make this a black and white layer. So notice when we change this to soft light, what happens? Well, we get a nice big dynamic boost in our contrast right there really quickly, really effectively. And we can make a mask on here. We can edit out the stuff that we don't want. But we can take this even further because this at this point is only just a little bit. It's not enough to really boost the contrast like we wanted to. So the next thing we're going to do is go to filter, go to sharpen and go to unsharp mask. Now with the unsharp mask here, we have the capability of doing some real dynamic contrast damage on this photograph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the threshold up to about 25. I'm going to bring the amount up to about 200%. And then I'm going to use the radius as what controls how much contrast I get in this image. And you can obviously change that by maybe increasing the percentage, the amount that you actually give that uh, a little bit more. So how this breaks down is the amount is just how much of that contrast are you trying to boost? The radius is how much do you want it to affect your image? A, a very small pixel amount will make really tight contrast adjustments 
adjustments, a bigger pixel amount will make a more widespread contrast adjustment. And your threshold is basically how you protect that area from, from moving too hard too fast. Like this one, it looks really crunchy, almost kind of gives me a headache a little bit. So we're gonna bring that back to that 25 uh, levels there. If you bring the threshold all the way up here, it's almost going to appear like nothing is happening to the photograph because there's entirely too many levels selected. So this is kind of like your protector. Uh, we'll leave that at 25. And from the radius, if you boost that or lower that, that is going to, to dictate how much of that contrast comes on our image, and we can press OK. So now if we look at our preview, here it is before, here it is after. You can see the detail in that rocks really coming out. I mean, it's coming out real strong. So what we also need to do here is think about using a mask on this. So we can go down here and select our mask icon. Now if we brush in black, that will say, hey, uh, I don't want you to affect this area back here. You're basically saying, I don't want this contrast on these trees and this waterfall. This is Bridal Veil Falls in Yosemite. A gorgeous place to shoot, but very difficult to shoot when the, when the waterfall is dumping that much. I was getting soaked while I was out there. So basically, I'm just brushing away all those areas. If I press Alt or Option on this mask, you can see all the areas that are not being affected by this contrast, and I can fine tune that if I want to. One place that I'd also probably not want that is right here in the water. So I'll use my Wacom tablet so I can get a little bit more detail with this adjustment here and just go right in there on that water. And that looks pretty good. So now we've used a mask so that we can block out those areas. Another thing that we can do here is we can zoom in and we can drop our opacity down, maybe lower that opacity so it's not so powerful on our image. If you're using a, a very a lower res image, this might be a, a good idea to do And these high res images were okay. I'm just going to bring that opacity back up to 100 because I want to show you one more thing. So let's press alt or option and click on that contrast layer. So you can see now this is the only place that our image is being affected because of the mask that I've put on there. If I press shift and click on that mask, now we see everywhere where this contrast is taking place. And we can do one more thing. It's really cool. It's a curves boost specifically for this la layer. So if I click on the adjustment layers and go to curves, if I alt click alt or option click right here in between the two layers that will say this curves adjustment layer, I only want you to affect what's exactly underneath me and nothing else. So it's not going to affect our background layer. It's only going to apply itself to our contrast layer. So now we can put a curve on there and we can start modifying our adjustment on a curve. So if we put the preview on our image now and we adjust this curve, you can see how the curve is now affecting the contrast in our image even more based solely off of what is happening in this layer underneath. All right, so that's how you can get even more powerful with that. So we can take that uh, mask back off there and look at our curves adjustment layer here. Now that's a little too powerful, but I wanted to show you that the capability is there. So we did talk about quite a bit in this. So what I've done is I've created a series of actions. If you go down here, you see the effective contrast F64 Academy actions. There is a small, medium, and large. Okay, so you get a very small amount of contrast. You get a medium amount of contrast and a large amount of contrast. And you get that curves boost. Where all you have to do is press play on that curves boost, and it will apply a curves adjustment layer to the layer that you have selected for you to edit. A couple things to take away from here. The soft light blend mode is really powerful because a neutral gray color will not affect your image at all. If you add some white, it'll make things lighter. If you add black, it'll make things darker, but it'll never get to pure black or pure white, which is really great, especially for this contrast technique that we talked here, because a high pass layer essentially is a 50% gray layer with your details outlined in black and white. Okay, that's why this works so well. The next thing is to use a high pass adjustment layer. The high pass is great just for your micro contrast. You can make some really good micro contrast just with that high pass sharpen. But if you want to get into the medium contrast and the large contrast and expand the selection of that high pass, you need to use the unsharp mask tool. And you can use the amounts and the radius to uh, really push the contrast really far and use a threshold to protect things. Also, be sure that this layer from the high pass is desaturated by pressing command or control shift U. That way it does not leave any color cast on your image as you go through. 
So please download these actions. There's a link. If you're on YouTube, there's a link in the description. If you're on F64 Academy, it will be on the page and you're free to use these to boost up the contrast in your images without having to jump into plugins. What makes this so much more powerful than jumping into a plugin is now you have access to your opacities, your blend modes, your curves, adjustment layers, anything you can use in Photoshop, you can use on that micro contrast or that contrast adjustment that we created to make it even more effective than just a slider. Again, my name is Blake. Rudis, I want to take the time to thank you for watching this video. And please, if you like it, comment on it, share it, tell a friend, because this is a very powerful technique to get that boost in your images. Thanks again.